Hello everyone, it is John and it's a Monday. Pardon me, which means it's waffle time. It's <laughs> sadly uh, too cold and too wet for Pippin. He's, uh, oh, it's still a little bit dark. It's uh, I think just before six o'clock here, my time. Uh, and uh, technically it's winter. But uh, his lordship's been out in the wet grass and he's currently having a sook because it's cold, it's wet, and he's not very happy. He wants to sit on my lap and I'm trying to do this recording and he's gone off to sulk. So, the tribulations of being a small dog. Mm. It makes a, it's a hard life, isn't it? Yes. But yeah. Anyway, so what's been happening? Uh, honestly, I've had a drought for games. I've had one game, I think, since last I spoke, and that's with uh, my uh, good friend Simon, who runs a monthly um, game of Imperial Assault, which has been doing quite, quite well. So there's... Uh, how many of us are there? There's one, two, three, four adults. Four adults and uh, two children participating in that event. So uh, nobody's technically died yet, which is most unusual. I think Simon's being very kind to us. He's been far too kind, I think. He needs to bring on total player kill. Uh, maybe that happens in the last mission. Maybe maybe he's just gently working us up to the... Uh, to the uh, to the end. He's already got the mark, graves marked out, but I'm just playing them all. I'm playing them all. I'm a Jedi. Or am I? Am I really secretly a Sith Lord in the making? I'm always a Sith Lord. Yes, but anyway, it's it's a lot of fun actually. I really do like Imperial Assault, um, but I just wish that the game wasn't as sadly as expensive as it was. Yeah, so apart from that, um, I guess there were a lot of opportunities in the making for games during the week, but sadly they um, things kept cropping up and weren't able to uh, weren't able to get to them. But you know that's what life is. Life is full of things that happen, and uh, you know we don't always get to uh, get to them, but other times do become available. They get there eventually. So, problems that you just sometimes feel that you get left out and uh, you feel very lonely. But anyway, that's, that's just the way things are. So, what's been happening? Well, I guess this little bit of a, a vlog today is just having a look at things that have been floating around on social media that have got my goat. Yes, I've got a whole yard of goats. Yes, and as you can tell from being an old man, um, I like to express my opinions these days because I'm too old to really give a hoot about whether or not anybody agrees with my opinion. So I was looking on one of the sites and they were talking about classic games. Classic games that are only like five, somewhere between five and ten years old. Yeah, yeah. So that got me thinking. What's the definition of a classic? I had to go look that one up. And according, once again, I had to go search through the internet. So, again, the internet does not always contain everything that is truthful or factual. So I'm going on what I believe was the best source for the information that I could find. And it says here, a classic is an outstanding example of a particular style, something of lasting worth or with a timeless quality, of the first or highest quality or rank, something that exemplifies its class. Well, considering board games and how quickly games fall in and out of favour and how our self-appointed board game elite decide what is and isn't something that is, um, shall we say, um, well, dare I say a classic? <laughs> or groundbreaking? What may be groundbreaking today may be yesterday's 
oh, goodness knows what. Yesterday's oatmeal, perhaps. But it's interesting because it's... Um, you know, I was looking here where it says, um, with a glass, with classic, it's judged over a period of time to be the highest quality and outstanding of its kind. And they give here as an example, a classic novel. So you might look at a classic novel might be, for instance, say, Dickens. Dickens is, you know, quite a few centuries old now. So that... I would say is certainly a classic novel. Yet, you may find that, say, a novel like To Kill a Mockingbird is a classic novel, and that's fairly recent, although it's quite a few decades old. But it's decades old. It's not like a book that was written, say, yesterday, and saying this is a classic novel. So I guess to look at our board games and say this is a classic board game and to say that it's only been out for five years or something, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The board games, because there's so many of them coming out so quickly, so fast, the, the way that one can look at what is a classic game, see, you know, classic board game, I suppose Monopoly. I know a lot of people don't like it. I don't have a problem playing it. It's, you know, Monopoly would have to be classified as a classic game. Whether or not people define it as a good game is neither here nor there, but it's something that has been around for a long, long time. You know, it's a particular style. But, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So for people to sort of divine, define what is a classic, is really down to a personal taste. And uh, it's an interesting way to look at things. So I think when somebody puts up classic top ten, or a classic whatever, it is really them saying, this is my classic list. Because really, there are none. There's no definitive classic list because it's all subjective. That's all it is, personal taste. So there. Mm. But yeah, so what else has gotten my goat over the over the last <laughs> over the last week? <coughs> oh dear. Sorry, this weather. <coughs> um <coughs> Oh god. I saw some rampage about bloody alcohol. And uh, all I will say on this is that People are individuals, and people have a right to say yes or no as to whether or not they wish to consume it. So stop being victims and take responsibility for your own life. If you're going to events and drinkies are put on by event organisers, um, that's the event's prerogative. You don't have to drink there. And to malign an event organiser or whoever for having put on drinkies to be made available, I think is a great injustice um, towards those people who provide them to people who may very well like to have a drink to wind down either at the end of the event or before an event to socialise. Drinking has been part of a social interaction for millennia, shall we say. So I think for, um, I guess, the moral elite to start deciding to preach, I think is hypocrisy at the best. So I'd suggest that people take control of their uh, their own lives and decide, you know, if they want to to drink and um, that's really up to them nobody else has control of their lives no. and uh, again for events that events or people or public or you know or publishers or, or whoever else who do put on these um, you know um, events where there's um, you know, there's drinkies and uh, and food and uh, and all sorts of things put on. 
there's no such thing as a free lunch. There's an expectation that there will be some sort of, you know, quid pro quo uh, from attendees. So you are naive if you do not think that there is not some sort of expectation that um, will come from it. So, you know, part of it, yes, is networking. And some of it will be, hopefully, you will give them a good review or, you know, build a repertoire with said organisation or whatever. So, you know, I think it's just the standard mob with pitchforks and torches out on their usual rampage just looking for something else to go and destroy. So, well done to the Hypocrisy Brigade. Um, I'm sure eventually people will come after you next. So what else is there that, um, I, th I guess the last thing that I'm going to get on my high horse about was, I noticed that somebody posted a picture on, <clears throat> on one of the sites. Lovely game room. <laughs> All you're getting is the back background here. Shelves of, um, shelves of games and a lovely game table. And uh, would you come play at my place? Why wouldn't you? It's nice. I wouldn't say no. But that should not be the defining reason why you would go and play with somebody because they have an opulently decked out game room. All that really does is shout out, yep, I've got quite a bit of cash. I'm, you know, I guess that's, that's screaming, I'm better off than a lot of other people, which upsets a few people, particularly when they may be, you know, somebody who only has maybe one or two board games and plays on the kitchen table. So, um, I guess the I guess the focus of this little part of my conversation is that yes it's very nice that people have wonderfully opulent game rooms but there is nothing wrong if you have nothing but your kitchen table and a couple of games that are stacked on top of each other in the corner of your living room and you should feel just as comfortable with saying Hey guys, this is my games room. Do you want to come round and play games at my place? You should feel just as comfortable hopefully getting people to come round and play with you. Because trust me, I have an opulent game room and for years I've never been to attract anybody. So but that may just be my personality and the fact that I'm just an old man now. And uh, younger people aren't interested in old people anymore to play games with. So, you know, this is, I guess, the, um, the crux of my um, comment, is that it doesn't take much to go and play a game anywhere. Like the club that uh, I used to, uh, to be associated with, we rented a hall. You know, all we had was tables, tables and chairs, and people would rock up with their board games, and we'd just sit around the tables and play on that. You know, there weren't any, you know, there weren't any shelves or anything like that, and we had people turn up and play. So it's, you know, that's gaming and playing games is all about meeting people and sitting down and playing games in a place that you feel comfortable playing at. And uh, that's the primary, the primary focus, I guess, these days is, um, is somewhere that's comfortable. So whether or not that's at a, a friend's place or, uh, or at a club or, I don't know, um, some shopping, sorry, some games shop venue or something like that that's really up to you um, but yeah it's uh, you know it's nice I, I guess it's it's nice I just find that 
too many games <laughs> on, on a shelf tends to lead to people being unable to make a decision as to what game they're going to play because there's too many options. If you turn up, <coughs> pardon me, if you turn up to a person's place with one box, guess what? That's the game you're going to play. But yeah, yeah. So I think that has covered all the things that I, I guess that I wanted to uh, to cover for today were those, I guess, those things that have think have gotten my goat. Um, yeah, so that's it, Pippin. I think, and I will go for a wander. Go for a wander this morning. He was out truffle hunting. Well, it's not truffles hunting. It's, it's him poking his nose under the smelly, smelly plants in the retirement village opposite me. So he, he enjoys his little walk. So um, apart from that, it's just another week of. Um, me, myself and I probably thinking what, what videos we'll do for the next week so I've no idea what I will be doing so all right well look everybody take care have a wonderful week and until next time signing off the Honourable John <laughs>